Hello, Mr. Zonker here, and this video is on solving more complex equations. Not more as in the number of equations, but the equations that we're solving are going to be a little more complex. Hmm, maybe I should have thought of a different title. Anyway, who are you going to call? Fraction busters and decimal busters. Uh, basically, our first strategy is we want to rewrite equations in a way that makes the equations easier to deal with. In other words, let's get rid of the fractions and the decimals uh, so we don't have to worry about those things. Fractions, we want to multiply both sides by a common denominator to clear the fraction out. For decimals, we can multiply both sides by a power of 10 to clear the decimals out. Let's get into a couple examples. So our first example here, we have x over 2 plus x over 5 equals 3. Now we could solve this by getting common denominators, combining them, uh, and solving like normal, but if we identify that common denominator as 10, common denominator of 5 and 2 would be 10, uh, we can actually multiply both sides of the equation. So we multiply the left by 10, multiply the right by 10, and this 10 is actually going to distribute in on the left because it multiplies the whole side, uh, and that's going to give us 10 times this term x plus x over 2, 10 times this term, term x over 5, and on the other side we have that 10 times 3. Let's see what happens with each of these uh, multiplications here. We have 10 times x over 2, and multiplying a fraction, we could divide by 2, so 10 divided by 2, uh, that's actually going to leave us with a 5. Uh, this 10 times x over 5, if we do 10 divided by 5, that'll leave us with a 2. And then, of course, we have this 3 times 10, which would be 30. So taking uh, both of those, we end up with this 5 times x, or 5x, plus 2 times x, or 2x, equals 30. And this is a much simpler equation to solve. Just combine these like terms and divide. We're not going to solve from here, uh, but our main thing was multiplying by the common denominator, and we can see that we eliminated those fractions. Now you don't need to write this down, but I did want to show you how quick this can go once you get the hang of it. Here I have common denominator 2 and 5, so I'm going to multiply uh, each term by 10. That kind of bypasses the distribution. My 10 and my 2 cancel, give me 5. My 10 and my 5 cancel, give me 2. 3 times 10 is 30, leaving me with that 5x plus 2x uh, equals 30. So there are a lot of steps, but that process can go much quicker once you get the hang of it. Let's take a look at a decimal example. Here we've got 2.6x minus 1.45 equals 4.3. Now our decimal place here, this 2.6, that's in the tenths place. This 1.45, that's a hundredths place, and 4.3 is in the tenths place. We need to go to the biggest one, so we're going to use the decimal place in the hundredths place. And the reason we did that, because we can actually multiply both sides of the equation by 100. Uh, and we can see when we distribute that in, 100 times that 2.6x, uh, that's going to leave us with 260, because 100 times 2.6 is now 260. 100 times that 1.45, that's going to give us 145. Then we have equals 4.3 times 100, that's going to give us 430. So real quickly, by multiplying by that power of 10, in this case 100, we cleared the decimals, and this is something simpler uh, that we can solve from here. Again, we're going to save time by not finishing that problem off. Our next example involves multiplying polynomials. Here we've got x minus 3 times x plus 6 equals x squared minus 12x minus 6. To make this simpler, we're going to rewrite by distributing that out. That's going to give us x times x, x squared, plus 6x, minus 3x, minus 18. And all of that's going to equal what we had before, minus 12x minus 6. There's actually something else interesting about this equation. It looks like we have an x squared term, and we really haven't solved for those types of problems yet. Now, let's say, let's move that uh, x squared term by subtracting it out. Um, I gotta keep it balanced, so I'm gonna do that both sides. And we can actually see that that x squared term and that x squared term cancel out, making it even simpler. From there, we could combine these like terms. We've got 6x minus 3x, which would give us a 
3x minus the 18 we have left equals negative 12x minus 6. And from here, this looks again like a simpler equation we would be able to solve from this point on. Our next example involves a square root. We've got square root of 2x plus 1 equals 6. And we're actually going to look inside to see what that square root needs to be to help us kind of piece together something we can easily solve. And in fact, if I'm looking at this equation, I see this plus 1. I know this whole thing needs to be a 5 because 5 plus 1 equals 6. So we can take that equation, square root of 2x, and we can say that needs to equal 5. That would kind of be the same like if we subtracted 1 from both sides. Uh, from there, we want to look inside again. Well, I know this whole thing needs to be 5. And what square root, uh, square root of what, is going to give me 5? So in that case, I can say, hey, I know what's inside here, this 2x, that's going to have to equal 25. Because if that equals 25, then the whole, uh, the whole problem uh, is going to work out, because square root of 25 is 5, and that's what we're looking for. So here we kind of just looked, used our minds, and said, hey, what does this need to be? If this needs to be 5, what needs to be inside? Uh, and that's going to give us an equation here, 25. From here, you could divide by 2 both sides, and uh, you'd get your answer x equals 25 over 2. Our final example is going to cover exponents. Here we actually want to rewrite using the same base, and then we can compare the exponents to set up an equation. We've got 10 to the negative 5x plus 7 equals 100 to the x. Notice, uh, I notice that 100 can be written as 10 squared. And this is very helpful because now we have a base of 10 on the left and a base of 10 on the right. Uh, and if I do my uh, exponent multiplication to the power of 2 to the power of x, uh, that would be 2 times x or 2x, uh, we'd get this down here. 10 to the negative 5x plus 7 equals 10 to the 2x. And if the bases are the same, in this case they are both 10, that means that the exponents also need to be the same. So we can take this negative 5x plus 7 and set it equal to 2x giving us an equation that looks much more familiar, and we can actually solve this complex exponential equation uh, just by comparing the exponents and what they need to be. All right, everyone, I hope this video was helpful.